In this video, we're going to talk about IP version 4 addressing. So we're going to look at the IP version uh, for address classes. We're going to look at subnet mask. And we're going to also look at private IP addressing. So let's get started. So the first thing we want to look at is the IP classes we have in IP version 4. Now in the last video, we talked about IP addresses and we said that IP addresses were expressed in .NET decimal format. So we had x.x.x.x where uh, x is a decimal number. Now, if x is a decimal number and there are 32 bit here, that means that each of these carries eight bits. That means that in numbers here can be from zero all the way to 255. So the kind of addresses we can have, we can have addresses from 0.0.0.0 .0 all the way to 255.255.255.255. .255 .255. Now, these addresses are divided into what are called different classes of addresses. So we have classes uh, A to E. Now, what you need to know about the classes for now is that first, the addresses that start with zero are not used. The first class starts from one, and that's class A. And it goes from 1.0.0.0 all the way to 126.255.255.255. And technically, what that means is that you have 1.0.0.0, 1.0.0.1, all the way to 1.0.0.255. And then you go to 1.0.1.0, 1.0.1.1, all the way to 1.0.1.255. And you go all the way till you get to 126.255.255.255. Class B addresses, we have the 128.0.0.0, all the way to 191.255.255.255. And for class C, we have 192.0.0.0 all the way to 223.255.255.255. Now, if you notice, we have exempted the 127 address. So we stopped that 1 to 126 for class A and went to 128 for class B. The 127, when it's used for what is called the local host, so it's used to test your TCP IP stack. So when you have something like, for example, 127.0.0.1, it basically means you're talking about the machine uh, that you are on. So it's just a local host. An example is if you have a web server in your system and you need to access the web server from a browser, you could just type 127.0.0.1 and you're going to access the web server. The differences in class A, B, and C are in the subnet masks, and we'll just discuss that in a second. Well, class D, which starts from 244.0.0.0 all the way to 239.255.255.255, is actually set aside for what's called multicast. If you remember, Multicast is when you send one packet, but it has many destinations, meaning that when you send a packet going to any of these addresses, you're actually sending it to a group. Uh, there can be many receivers of that packet. It doesn't uniquely identify one system anymore. It identifies a group of systems. Class C, all the way from 240.0.0.0 to 255.255.255.255, it's actually used for research, so it's just set aside for research. So pretty much what you're going to be dealing with with day to day is class A, the class B, and the class C. And now let's look at the differences in the classes. So what is a subnet mask? When you have an IP address, the way the IP address knows what network it's on is by using a subnet mask. So for instance, if I have an IP address that says 171.23.5.7, and the subnet mask says 255.255.0.0, .0 .0, now, the IP address is a 32-bit address. The subnet mask is also a 32-bit address. What a subnet mask says is that wherever you have a 1 in the subnet mask, that's part of the network. And where you ever have a 0, it's part of the unique host address. If we expand 255, we have 111111111. So you have all 1s for the first two octets and all zeros for the last two octets. Zero, 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 zero. Now what that means is that the first two octets representing the network of this address while the last two octets represent the host. So you could say that this computer is on the 172.23 network. Its unique address is the 5.7. So it's on the same network related to 172.23.0.1. It's on the same network with 172.23.255.234. It's on the same network with anything that starts with 172.23. So that's the concept of subnet masks. 
it helps you to uniquely identify where your network is and what is your host address. So how does that tie into the classes of IP version four addresses? For class A, the default subnet mask is 255.0.0.0. And what that means is that it's just the first octet that defines the network part of the address. So for instance, if you have a class A address like 8.2.2.1, by default, it means that it's on the same network with everybody that has an address that starts with eight. And it has the remaining 24 bits here for the host. That means there can be two raised to the power of 24 hosts on this network. And if we use our calculator to check that, we're going to find out there could be about 16.7 million hosts on a particular network that is a class A network. Now that's really too large for a network because if you imagine a network being a broadcast domain, that means that if any of these 16 million devices actually tries to send a broadcast, then all the 16 million devices are going to get it. I don't really think there's any network that is as large as that. But that's class A. Class B tries to reduce the number of hosts that we have on the network by increasing the number of networks by changing the subnet mask. So we have subnet mask is 255.255.0.0, which means that the first two octets represent the network, while the last two octets represent the host. So we have something like class B address that is like 139.15.6.5. The 139.15 becomes a network, and the 6.5 is just for the host. So what you would say is that it's part of the 139.15 network. And so if you look at this, then you have 16 bits for networks and 16 bits for host. That means that you can have, for each network, 2 raised to the power of 16 hosts, which is about 65,536. And for class C, we follow where this is the number of uh, hosts that you can have so that we can increase the number of networks that we can have. So with that, we have 255.255.255.0, and what that simply means is that now you can have just one octet for the host, so you can have two raised to the power of eight hosts, and that's going to be about 256 uh, hosts. So for instance, if we have a class C address like 195.17.22.136, uh, it means that uh, the first three parts are for the network. So this is on the 195.17.22 network, but the host address is a 136. And what it also means is that you can communicate with any device that starts with the 195.17.22. So in general, for subnet masks, the core concept is that wherever you have a one, it must match to be in the same network. And wherever you have a zero, it does not have to match. So whenever I have... Uh, if I have two addresses that are 172.16.2.5 and 172.16.7.20, by default, the above class B addresses, so their mask would be 255.255.0.0. Now, if I have 255.255.0.0 here, oh, these are ones, so it means that these two addresses must match. And these are zeros, means that it didn't have to match. So since these two addresses match, then we can say that they're on the same network. Now, it can get a bit more complex than that, and we can look at that when we get into subnetting, but in general, this is how a subnet mask works. Private IP addresses are the addresses that are used internally. They're not routed to the internet. And what this means is that, normally if you route every address to the internet, the uh, IPA version 4 addresses would not be enough. We saw only about two days ago on Twitter that Cisco systems count together for over 10 billion devices that are connected to the internet. Now, with the current IP4 version addressing scheme and the classes, we do not have enough addresses for 10 billion devices. In fact, if we have two raised to the power 32, that just takes you to about 4.9 billion and there's still many devices that will be connected to the internet besides the 10 billion devices. So clearly the IP version 4 addresses are not going to be enough. So the way this problem is being solved is through what's called private IP addresses. So what this means is that whenever you have a network, an internal network, the address that are used are what are called private IP addresses and they're not routed on the global internet. This is done to save IP addresses. So what happens is whenever you have an internal network, depending on the size, you can have a class A address or a class B address or a class C address that is assigned to the internal network. And then those addresses are now converted to global IP addresses 
So that way we can save IP addresses and they are converted through a process known as a NAT, a network address translation. So what really happens is that if you have a network of about 200 users, you can give them a class C address, a class C private address. For instance, let's say 192.168.1.0 and the subnet mask would be 255.255.255.0. Now, when these users are going to connect to the internet, they can uh, all be translated to just a few addresses through something called port address translation, which we will talk about as we go along in our Cisco journey. So now we can translate all these 200 users to just about five addresses. You've ended up saving uh, 195 of these addresses and making more addresses available for the internet and for things to work. So that's why we have private IP addressing. Internally, if you have ever connected to a network, you might notice that the address scheme is one of these schemes, either a 10 network or a 172 network or 192.168 network. And that's because those are defined private IP address ranges. And they were defined in the RFC 1918 for class A. You have the 10.0.0.0 network to the 10.255.255.255, meaning you have just one class A class. Because remember that class A is just a 255.0.0.0 subnet, which means that anything that begins with the first octet is part of the network. So for class B, we have 172.16.0.0 to 172.0.0. 31.255.255. So we have 16 class B classes. And for class C, we have anything from 192.168.0.0 all the way to 192.168.255.255. So we have 255 class C classes because the subnet mask for class C is 255.255.255.0. Now, you need to memorize these private IP address classes because they might be in the exam and you need to configure them over and over as you go in your Cisco journey. So in this video, we've been able to look at IP version four classes. We've also been able to look at subnet masks and we've been able to look at private IP addresses that we have. Uh, thank you very much for watching.